my name is Paul Snow. I'm, I'm uh, running the Texas Bitcoin Conference after fashion. Actually, as you and I both know, our wives run these kinds of events. They did all the work. They did all the work, <laughs> but we get to take the credit. We do. A so we're in front of the camera. Thank you, what lovely wives, for doing all the actual work. You guys are amazing. Absolutely. Uh, the conference first started in 2014. I, I believe I met you before 20, before the conference. You went to the first conference? Oh, yeah, yeah I was yeah. there. I was there with Twain When, voice, when did I meet you? Um, I was there like in 2012 or so. No, I, not pro it wouldn't have been until before 2013 because uh, I, I started uh, meetup groups around uh, the spring we, of 2013. We met before that, actually. Oh, did we? Yeah. Okay. So we actually, let me see if I remember this. We were at Opal Divines. We had lunch over there, mm -hmm. and you had a couple of ideas of implementing a hardware wallet of sorts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and this and was before you were doing the meetings. Yeah, and this was, the, the, the idea was a personal banker where you used a internal architecture into the computer where you could keep a computer offline That's right. inside of the computer you plug online. Right, and you were so going to use had, serial ports and all yeah, that. Yeah, and we're going to have complete isolation. Right. Uh, so basically a cold wallet inside of a warm wallet inside of a hot wallet. Which that idea. Is, which, which really would still be cool. Yes, it would have still been a neat idea. Yeah. Well, even now, I don't know of anyone that's doing that. But uh, so we met, we talked, and then uh, the conference started uh, in 2014. And Decred, oh no, you were Coin Voice. Coin Voice at the time. Coin Voice. Yeah. So what was Coin Voice? Coin Voice was, or Co Invoice, it really depends on who you ask because it's a bit of a clever name. It was an invoicing, a third party invoicing system. So what you could do with that is you could invoice somebody in Bitcoin and get paid in US dollars or the other way around. So okay. it was a really cool product uh, right up until the US government changed the rules around and, um, and basically made us into an MSB and then we had to register and then we decided it was not worth the cost. So we shuttered the business. Now, MSB, the, the money service business right. and money transfer business, and this is, you know, something you have to register in yeah, and every state. Every state and it's very costly. Yeah. Um, so What's the typical estimate? Well, so uh, I'm hearing different amounts these days, but back then what we got quoted is about four and a half to five million dollars to yeah. register. And, and that, it was not even the money that was the issue because we could have raised that. It really was the, um, the amount of time it would cost. It would be months and months, even years possibly, before you can register in every state. So, um, and there was so much competition out there already. We, we figured. Yeah. Bit pay. Yeah, so yeah. it was like probably not going to uh, be worth the investment over time. Yeah, and so uh, talking about somebody in Austin, we were uh, really sad because all of these other countries, uh, like BitPay is out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia, and um, I don't think Circle was around yet. Circle came after you closed, if I remember I think so, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but we were we we were very proud of a, you know, kind of a Boston, at least some of the team yep. being here in Texas, and and that was fun. But then um, you were also doing BTCD. We were do actually. Um, so let's rewind that a little bit. Yeah. So BTCD was actually written. Uh, first, and we started using that with CoinWest because we like mm -hmm. to eat our own dog food, so we wrote all that code from scratch. And, and for the folks that don't know, BTCB was a Golang implementation uh, of the a full node of, of Bitcoin, and uh, and that's what CoinWest ran on top of. So, okay. so that was yeah. We were very familiar with the Bitcoin protocol. Is BTCD still being maintained? It is still being maintained, although uh, we have passed the baton on that, and so folks from the community are now running uh, with BTCB. Okay. Well, that's that. I mean, now BTCD was a very integral thing to what I did because I'm working at Factum as well as the conference over in Factum. We uh, we started out uh, attempting to just modify BTCD a little sure. bit to create another coin. Well, and, well and so we, we go ahead. So, so what I was going to say though is with BTCD, we really um, we added a lot of documentation, uh, mm -hmm. and it it it, be, and it was a very easy to use code base, very well documented, very well written, um, because we. We had the, the benefit of hindsight mm -hmm. uh, on the Bitcoin Core right. code, right? Because it, it was not kind of slapped together like Bitcoin Core was at the time. So again, benefit of hindsight, right? So now, right. We, now we know how to go do this, right? And, and, and fresh implementation. Absolutely. Yeah, B B Bitcoin was more of an organic growth. Yes. And, and so, um, so, uh, so tell me about uh, how you got to Decred. Because oh man. So Decred was actually an outgrowth off BGCD, honestly, because what happened there is. Um, we launched BTCD, we use it for our own business, but we were not as welcomed in the community as we would expect we would have been because, you know, we dropped this amazing piece of code and we expected the community to be very 
welcoming uh, to it, and they weren't, right? They felt threatened, they, uh, they thought it was some sort of power struggle. So we kind of got pushed out to the sides, and they were saying very ugly things about us and about the code base, which was, you know, unfair and uncalled for, really, because, we, you know, we were trying to help by adding some, some value to the community. We did it, we wrote it open source so that we could share it with right. the AR community. So, and, and that is actually what pushed us in the direction of deep red, because like, you know what, this, the community is broken, right? So right. Not, uh, the code is amazing and incredible, it does great things, Bitcoin is great, but there are some elements within this community that are, let's call it unfriendly. Right, and um, so now, uh, but kind of a, to look at that a little differently, I, I just, a little editorial uh, views. When I was looking at Bitcoin during the same period, and I saw projects like BTCD, as well as some of the work that uh, that Mark, uh, Mike Hearn did to create the Bitcoin client mm -hmm. Java, uh, I viewed these alternate implementations of the Bitcoin uh, nodes, uh, uh, the, the Bitcoin uh, protocol, as proof that we really understood the specifications. Absolutely. Right. And proof that it, no matter what flaw might exist in a implementation, it's very unlikely to exist in three implementations right. unless there's truly a flaw in the specification. So I viewed what you were doing as a very critical piece to the reliability of the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, Decred now has been written, you have a client written in Go. Yep. Uh, anybody interested in uh, creating a client in some other language like C++? Or? Actually, Rust is being debated by some folks, and, oh. and we would encourage it. We would, we will, we'll even help out, uh, because we do feel that we need a second or a third or a fourth uh, implementation. So the, the way to look at this, though, is, um, and I think it's, there's some flawed thinking around this, but the internet is not great because we have a web browser, right? The internet is not great because we have a TCP IP implementation. It's great because we have multiples. Right. right, and and if something breaks, one of them breaks, you have alternatives, right, that you can still continue to use the network with. So it's a resilience thing, right, mm -hmm. and um, and it's not about a hard forking thing. I mean, everybody was freaking out about hard forks back in those days, uh, and now it's normal, right? Because and now we call even hard forks governance. Right? Uh, in that uh, in the governance panel, the, the, that was the big argument. Right. So so, so forks are governance, yeah. really? Because that's not what it was in 2012 at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and and. Of course, now there's a difference between a hard fork that is, is is a conscious decision by a group of people to move into into a different direction, and a hard fork that occurs spontaneously sure. because you have some flaw in your software. So, let let's be clear: a lot of the fear was the spontaneous hard fork as opposed to um, a conscious decision to hard fork. How, where, where, where would you say you are? Do you, what's your version number at this point? Oh, uh, well, the version is 131 is the last one we one, dropped. 131? But and, um, and what do you think in terms of generation? Do you feel like you've gotten past the initial oh, stage? Oh, yes. And do you think, so tell, tell me what that timeline looks like. What have, what have you implemented and deployed uh, since since it was a live protocol? So we, we went live, so Testnet went live in 2015. Uh, we, we hacked on it for about two and a half years, three years before it actually went live. Um, so, code went live, so Testnet first, 2015, very early, like January um, 2016 is when Mainnet went live. And um, we declared 1.0 in uh, January, I want to say January 2017. Okay. And what happened there was, is that is actually when we expose the functionality of doing the controlled hard forks, which enables our on-chain governance. So uh, the code existed, but it was not acted upon, right? It mm -hmm. just was inside of it, but not accessible. Okay. So, and we made it accessible so that people can actually vote and make control decisions on uh, on the blockchain. And that's when we declared 1.0. Since we have actually launched our uh, proposal platform, mm -hmm. and with that, we actually now have a full stack in the governance. So we can do on-chain, off-chain, signaling, uh, Hard forking, we have all the uh, all the pillars covered at this point. How many hard forks do you have you deployed? Uh, I want to say about four. That's my. So it, it's it, this again. We got to realize that, that there's multiple layers to governance, right? Right. And, and the the hard fork ones on on chain are pretty few and far between, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so right. we don't want to have a whole bunch of these at any given time, right? Right. We can, right? We can have ten of them going on at the same time. But but if you need to make ten changes to your consensus. At the same time, probably something really bad has happened. 
No, so but we actually or, or you're just implementing some sort of really complicated feature. Sure, so, so, sure. So that, because uh, fact on, yeah, keep understand. We have a friendly, um, symbiotic relationship. Of both you are the primary driver and developer inside of Decred, and I'm the primary developer and designer inside of Factum. And uh, we have uh, some very big, very big uh, uh, fundamental improvements to our system that we are looking to deploy, and that'll be a really big hard fork that exactly fits your description of right. a bunch of things at once. And, and, and actually, your conclusion is also true. We're doing this because there really are some big problems at a lower level right. that I, we wish we, we hadn't have done, mm -hmm. and we have to back those out and right. rebuild them. And so... Um, you cannot predict the future. And so yeah. the thing is, and this is the thing that I think some folks don't realize, is that this is software. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be un, you know, unknown unknowns in the famous mm -hmm. Rumsfeld words. And you need to be able to deal with that. And having this ability on your blockchain actually enables you to deal with bad things in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and this gives you longevity. Mm -hmm. And so, in, in fact, actually one of the reasons why a lot of these hedge funds and VCs have been picking us off as an investment is because they see the longevity, right? Because we can adapt. Like, oh, you guys are probably going to be around 10 years from now, mm -hmm. 20 years from now. And they have 10, 20 year horizons on these investments. Well, let's, let's uh, kind of go back to uh, the Texas Bitcoin Conference and kind of map out the progress that you've done inside of Decred with these milestones that we've had in, in terms of the conference. So we had a conference in 2014, and that was when you were doing Coin Voice. Yep. And 2015, you were still doing Coin Voice? Uh, yes, you, but I think that that might have been right around right when, about it, the time that when we shut it down. Shut yeah. it down. Uh, yeah, I believe that's that is correct. And um, and then we skipped 2016 because it was in the desert of Bitcoin, and yes. uh, conferences yes. were really struggling, you know. Um, but then we had uh, last year's conference at the end of October in 2017. Uh, so what happened between 2015 and 2017? Uh, basically, CoinVoice goes away, right. and your strong Decred is already strong. Uh, well, also, so don't forget that in uh, 2015 we were still hacking Decred. Well, we were still hacking it every day, yeah. right? So, yeah. so it's, it's not that bad of one away. Uh, no, but, you know, we... So CoinVoice goes away, and that was actually the real kick in the butt to... Uh, the ideas were floating, but that's the kicking about. Okay, we've got to have to go do this, right? Because we have been right. playing with this idea, and now that we can no longer run this business, which is profitable, now what, right? And we, oh, we have this idea we have been toying with, right? And right. So, and then that's where we, you know, that was the necessary kick in the butt to make it real. Okay, so between uh, uh, last year at this time and this year, what, it, to me, look, looking from the outside, Massive things happened in oh, Decred. Oh well, so most of them were actually backend related. Mm -hmm. um, so we we changed a lot of things with the backend that were not necessarily as visible as mm -hmm. you would have expected. But we we've, we've done things like we now have a secure SPV wallet. Mm -hmm. We have uh, most of that done. We actually are going to have to do a, a controlled hard fork to make it super pretty, but it's functional now in the wallet. It's just not enabled by default. Mm -hmm. um, that was a massive undertaking. Right. Uh, we have our proposal system that we launched. That was mm -hmm. a massive undertaking. Right? So, right. and there are these big things that are happening. I mean, um, it, it was a. By the way, so now when you download the credit arm, our wallets, uh, mm -hmm. it used to take a couple of hours to get online, and now it's minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So, so a lot of things behind the scenes that are not as visible have really changed. So I think the biggest visible thing that has happened is that our wallet now actually uh, integrates voting. So mm -hmm. you, you actually have a pretty view in our wallets. You can actually, in it, you can do everything Decred related in our wallets. So you typically right. don't have to go to a website or any of that stuff. You can just do it all there. And right. So it's very highly integrated and, and quite pretty at this point. Oh, very good. And so uh, in, in 2017, you had a table at the Texas Pikmin Conference? 2017 is when 2017. we had a table right out of the elevator. Right outside the <laughs> elevator. Yeah, so as people walked out, they looked at us. So. Good, good traffic. That was great traffic. Great traffic. That was and a then, fun conference, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. It, and it was. It was a sold-out conference. The uh, Bitcoin was on its way to, uh, to $20,000 yep. uh, in December, January time frame. And we, here we are at the, at the end of... Uh, October, you'll recall, cheers when we crossed 5,000. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, predictions that we would cross 10,000. I don't think we crossed 10,000 before we the did conference. Not. No, 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 no. We were, I think, in the five, six thousand yeah, dollar range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and a five, six thousand dollar range. And and everybody was just hyped, hyped, hyped. Now it's six thousand dollars. They're not hyped because it's hyped. the same price. <laughs> no, but the community and the and the and the atmosphere. But um, but here in uh, in so 2017, you had a table. This year, your role in the conference. We well, uh, thanks to Factum and uh, you know, and Paul, we 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 got to be platinum sponsors. It was great because we we had an entire track. We had I don't know, I want to say, ten or so uh, decred specific uh, topics. Right. Those were all recorded, and we're going to put all those on the internet. And I'm right. I'm very excited about that actually because um, so even though I would have liked a couple more butts in the seat because I, mm -hmm. I felt actually that folks were walking around and in, in, mingling more than they were They were listening. mingling more than they were in, sitting in the seats, yeah. But the fact that we have HD video of everything uh, is going to be great because mm -hmm. there were some outstanding sessions. I, I, right. I know you, you didn't get to see them all and I know you're going to watch some, but for example, the crypto economics ones with Chris mm -hmm. Berninski and Chris Dannon uh, and, uh, and, and Leon Fu, mm -hmm. um, th that was very brainy, very intellectual, and that was macroeconomics, Monetary policy, crypto policy, and it was. And these guys have so many insights, and you have to actually rewind your brain a little bit. It's like, wait, wait, wait! What you just said five sentences ago was really super profound, and I'm only now catching up to that. Yeah. And you're still talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. an outstanding, outstanding session. Yeah, and and there was a great uh, session that I also didn't get to see about uh, non fungible tokens uh, by some of the lawyers from Perkins Coie on the main track, mm -hmm. not the decrypt track. But um, but the point is, is that. This, all this amazing content is about building the ecosystem. And, and I'm going to project here, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. All right. But I, 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 one of the things about Factum and Decred is that we are super hyped about promoting the ecosystem, not necessarily just our project. Absolutely. You know, that fist fight that we had prior to the conference, I just want to apologize for that. <laughs> uh, you know, I just. The black eye went yeah, away pretty quickly. Yeah, it did. No. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I don't know of two other projects that, that consistently and constantly get along as well as we have. And, and I believe um, it pertains to working together with not just each other, mm -hmm. but how we're going to be able to work together with a whole lot of other projects to build really great things in oh, the absolutely. ecosystem. Oh, absolutely. So actually, one of our uh, Decred guests was the Saya project, right? David Morick mm -hmm. was here because we wanted to get him some time, right? Because he his project is pretty incredible and does some, some neat things. Uh, he also runs the obelisk miner so there there were some you know there's some other you know uh, let's call them sister projects that that, mm -hmm. that are friendly to the cause and, and and let's actually talk about it for five seconds so decred has proposed a dex mm -hmm. in which is a decentralized exchange for the folks right. who don't know and the way we're going to implement that is going to be non-monetizable in other words we're going to write that code give it to the community and what we're really trying to do there there is basically uh start you know this call it undermine or uh, light some fire under the current exchanges as right. Buts, right? And yeah. we're going to do that for the community, right? Because if you uh, support autom atomic swaps, you can play. Right, so what is a decentralized exchange? Well, a decentralized exchange is where you and I can agree on a price and we can exchange things. It's almost like we have done this for thousands of years and then something happened and we created all these middlemen that are kind of, you know, leeching, if you will, mm -hmm. <laughs> along the way. So what we want to do with this, with this decentralized exchange is if I have, a, uh, you know, a coin or a token that I want to trade with you, I need to be able to do that without a third party and without ever losing custody of my, uh, my cryptocurrency. Right. So, and that is the most important thing. So, uh, hey Paul, do you want to buy, uh, probably what I want to say about 120 or so uh, decred for a Bitcoin, if the answer is yes, sure. right, we can put up a, a smart contract uh, on both chains, right, and if the parameters match up, we trustless, escrowless, without any possibility of losing money, uh, can exchange our cryptocurrencies. Right. And, the, that, and that is fantastic. Right? Yeah, and in one case, uh, you either, uh, I forget who has the Bitcoin, either you get the Bitcoin and I get the decred. It, it or, doesn't matter, right? <laughs> or or no, nothing happens at right. all. Yeah, so, 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 so there's no, yeah. no, I get your Bitcoin, but right. you don't get my decred. That's right. So, so the yeah. way that works is, is you have to encode the parameters that right. you have set. So I, so the, the numbers that I just did yeah. are actually part of the smart contract. Right. So and if somebody messes with those numbers, the smart contract won't execute. Right. And then at some point you're going to get your funds uh, refunded back. Right. And... Um, and, and so that's a great 
uh, service to the community, and 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 honestly, it enables trading more than just decrediting. It's basically oh, yeah. any token that has that has Bitcoin script essentially. Yeah, um, but including Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin Litecoin. script or equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. So, in, in at this point, I think we have about 16 or 17 projects that have approached us with, uh, oh, by the way, we are the authors of the uh, Atomic Swap code. So, when a new token is uh, wants to get added, they basically send us code, we merge it, and then they get added. And then you don't get just one pair, now you get all the pairs, right? right. So, if you show up w to the Atomic Swap uh, party, you can play with everybody, right? Right. So, now you get Decred, you get Litecoin, you get Bitcoin, uh, oh my gosh, there's so many, Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Saya, Via, I mean, there's all kinds of good stuff in there. Right. And now, uh, at this point in time, Factum doesn't have the atomic swaps, but we're looking at uh, uh, getting this kind of code integrated uh, in the near future. Uh, Send us a PR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the biggest problem for us is uh, a set of priorities, as sure. you know, because, uh, because we're a different sort of project. But it is uh, an observation that a project like ours uh, knows what it takes to, to participate and we have a path that we right. choose to take it. And that kind of open uh, invitation and open architecture is a great credit to the philosophy that you guys have over at Decred. Well, and, and again, we, we are actually a bunch of old, uh, well, not all of us are old. So no. Me, I'm you. old. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the folks that, that, that we started with are mm -hmm. uh, open source developers, and they've done this right. for decades, right? So I've written so much uh, operating system code. Uh, yeah. I've always been in that in, in, in that mindset, right? So, right. And, and then when you have a conversation with business people, uh, it goes like this. So, so how are you going to monetize that? I'm not. I'm just having some fun. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, but, how, but what about your IP? I don't have any, <laughs> right? So, so it's, it's a different mentality, right? Yeah, and, yeah it, and, it really is. Now, now I, we, on the other hand, uh, file lots of patents. We filed over 20 patents. And, uh, but we are doing so because we uh, pragmatically look at the fact that um, uh, a patent work can occur sure. and everybody needs bullets in their holster. And, and, and I don't, but you're yeah. running a business, right? And we're running a project. Well, a but I, I, I'd encourage you to write at least one patent because uh, because one of, some of the defensive organizations, you have to have at least one patent to contribute. But who are you going to sue? Well, yeah, you, you, if you have no organization, then there's no one right. to sue. So, so yeah. good luck yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we have a business, and right. we can be sued. And in, so. Exactly. So the, and yeah. I, I completely understand this, because I mean, yeah. I have worked in corporate America. I understand. I've worked in technology my entire life. Right. So I understand IP. So why don't you talk about how you protect yourself by non-existence. Uh, so, <laughs> there is currently a organization that is not based in the United States called the DHG, the Decred mm -hmm. Holding Group, and that's the one that holds our treasury. We mm -hmm. are, uh, I want to say, a couple of months away from actually completely automating that portion, and then the disbursements from our treasury will become automatic based on proposals that were written by the community. Right. And at that point, we are fully, and I mean completely, fully decentralized. All decisions are made by the stakeholders, uh, money is dispersed by uh, by the stakeholders. By the software. Right. And so, obviously, a government can go after an individual, but they cannot go after the network. Right. And and this is, and actually, this is the, the decred vision uh, coming to fruition. So we are at where we wanted to be at when we started really talking about it. So there's light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train. Okay. What do you see for decred in 2019? So I am actually expecting that by this time next year, we'll be able to have our DAE, instead of DAO, we don't use that ugly word, decentralized autonomous entity. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of expect us to be online at that point. Uh, so I think we will have uh, achieved Decred Vision mm -hmm. uh, at that point. So a lot of excitement, that is going to be very exciting to do that because actually when we reach that, we are going to donate our entire treasury to the community. Mm -hmm. So when we have 570,000 or so decred in there, so that is what, $30 million yeah, at, wow. this, at this current valuation, yeah. and we're literally going to donate that. Mm -hmm. So and then the, the only way to get money out of the treasury is going to have enough votes that are going to sign the multi-sig right. uh, wallet to be able to actually get those funds out. Right. So, uh, and that is going to be, you know, I, I think a pretty important uh, milestone. Um, we are probably going to have a couple, uh, a couple, Literally a couple, so two maybe, uh, hard forks that we're going to go do. One of them, we, we want to enable a couple of things to make uh, off-chain voting a little prettier. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have one where um, 
uh, to actually make SPV very, very good. Very so we funny. actually, the way SPV works in Decred versus the way it works in, uh, traditionally in Bitcoin is that we every client asks the same question. So in other words, you don't leak any information. And we mm -hmm. have uh, very compressed data. Mm -hmm. So um, so you cannot lose your funds, and you, the, your, the servers are not what funds you own, right? So it's, it mm -hmm. still remains pretty anonymous. So, but in order to pull that off really, really pretty, we need one hard fork to enable some functionality. Um, so those are just things that are come to mind. So Lightning is probably going to be online at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, our privacy feature is uh, getting very near, but I cannot make a prediction of when. But and, and what's the privacy feature? I, this is one of the things that we actually keep secret until we are okay. done enough that we can launch So you're going to keep your privacy feature private. Private, yeah. No, but it's going to only, it, I, can, I don't have a timeline for you, but okay. the moment it works, in the moment we have audited the code and that we feel strongly that, that it's going to be good, we are going to publish it all, and then um, it is going to be actually a pretty massive amount of code. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, the zero knowledge proof world is a, is a spooky math. It's, and it's interesting. I, I, <laughs> I, I can follow elliptical curve math. I started looking at zero knowledge proof math, and it's really yeah, like snarks. Chewy. Yeah, it's uh, very wow. Chewy. Yeah, yeah, I'm too old for this. Uh, I, I mean, I can calculate, you know, general relativity uh, with relative ease, but the, n no, yeah. I, I'm off well, the Well, I have to that. admit, <laughs> I, I, I never did quantum uh, math, and I certainly didn't look at string theory. So, uh, you, there's a point where you decide that you trust some somebody, yep. but that's that's really exciting stuff to 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 think that you're looking at uh, a privacy feature. And do you think that uh, by this time, uh, maybe that's that could be released? Or so I'm actually pretty confident that the, the uh, privacy feature will be ready at that time. Okay. And also, uh, so the SPV, pretty confident about that. And the, so the, the one I'm a little bit uh, worried about is that the, we are going to run into some interesting. Um, issues with the DAE. We just don't know what it is yet, right? Because right. this is just code that you have to develop, and then you learn things along the way, yeah. and we're going to have to adapt to it. Yeah. So um, this is all, this is always code that is oh, that sounds simple, mm -hmm. and then you know, uh, 18 months later, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's when you figured out it wasn't. So what do you what what is your uh, public uh, uh, strategy then over the next couple of years? Obviously, or or maybe not obviously, but. Obviously, you're you're tentatively planning to be have a large presence in the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Well, so here's what's going to happen next year yeah. that's different from this year. So next year we are going to have to put up a proposal yeah. to see if we are allowed to go spend uh, the decreds to actually be at the conference. Right. So uh, so whatever we get out of this this year is going to be the measurement that the community is going to use. So this year we were still pulling this out of our call it quote unquote marketing budget right. next year uh, it's going to be the community deciding this right and so um, how is the relationship with the community so it, far so good so far so good <laughs> it's it's not toxic it's actually very healthy right now yeah. but uh, but you know what we are still relatively early on in this right so mm -hmm. there's going to be some uh, there's going to be a rub somewhere along the line sure. right so and there's going to be some some excited people saying excited things to other people and I mean, you have to get through this, and we are actually very aware that um, that, that there is going to be uh, changes along the way and alterations to the process and, yeah. and to code to enable certain things. I mean, yeah. you know, to reduce infighting and that kind of stuff. Well, in 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 our world, uh, over in the factum world, uh, the community uh, certainly grows a mind of their own, mm -hmm. and uh, it becomes in, uh, an interesting conversation. But uh, but nonetheless, uh, creating and participating in in a way that gives an opportunity for the community to be deeply involved um, is very helpful. So I hope that that's what happens in 2019. Well, I know where my votes are going, though. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Paul. I really appreciate it. I think the conference was a pretty big success. Yes. Um, and I think we are going to have some great content to share with the community. Yeah. Um, and there were some outstanding projects, with some outstanding debates, and you know, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to next year. I'm sure we can make it work somehow. All right. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you Marco. again.